Travis Wayne Goodsell, Mormons, are you ready for the consequences of your wickedness and disbelief? No? You think you can deny the consequences, man? Huh? Alright, good luck with that. Over all these years of the latter days, I have demonstrated through these YouTube videos, despite the terrorism of YouTube ordered by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, to silence my voice after my big display of who I am to you, July 2017. I've made it very clear who I am, and all you had to do was watch. You are required to study your scriptures so that you have no excuses, so that you will not be deceived by false prophets further. This church does not claim the gifts of prophet and revelator. They claim the titles. They deny the power thereof. So, in 2015, when Perry Packer Scott bit the big one on what you guys were told was a lunar tetrad, Monson came out with the first presidency statement and said, Nope, has nothing to do with the latter days. Keep paying your tithing. Move along, nothing to see here. Oh, how he was so wrong. That was the pre show for you, Mormons. And Chad Daybell, having had a near death experience, believed that that was the sign. And thus, Monson had to come out with his first presidency statement. And we all know what happened to Chad for his stupidity. He knew that it was, but had no clue as to what it was and what it meant. And so he then is now in prison and is awaiting the death penalty. And I'm sure with the coming days, the prison walls will fall and he'll think that's a sign from God and he's not allowed in Zion. What he did to those kids, no. Dear God. I am the expert. I am the only one throughout the whole world who have revealed all the days and hours of the signs in the heavens, who have prophesied, who have unsealed the scriptures for you. That alone is enough to prove to you as to who I am. And you still refuse to believe. You still want to murder me. All the dreams that I've shared with you, you will not soften your hearts. This church you believe has to be true at all costs, even to be a knee whore, as you blame me for being a Korra whore. Bleep you. So this morning, sleeping peacefully, enjoying my dream that uh, apparently involved a uh, interaction with another couple but I can't remember because I was uh, instantly awoken at three o'clock in the middle of that dream being told tell about the writing on the wall from the book of Daniel. And I know all about this. So I've been fearing and trembling all this morning. In the Book of Kings, 
which you know as Samuel, there was a baby born to a woman who was unable to bear a child. Pharaoh rapes her. I'm never going to get to this video, guys. Saving your lives is more important than showing how awesome and cool the scriptures are. As Hebrew. And, uh, and so she gives the child to the temple. So, the name of God as a baby is given to the temple of God in God's care with the sons of God working in the temple. The son of God, or the name of God, grows up and has a dream and is woken up in the dream by the voice of God. <laughs> and the name of God goes to God and asks, did you call me? And the name of God asks, did you call me? And God told the name of God, no, I didn't. Go back to sleep. And again, the voice of God came to the name of God. And the name of God went to God and said, did you call me? No, go back to sleep. And again, the third time, the name of God is told by the voice of God woken by the voice of God, and so the name of God again goes to God and says, Did you call me? No! <laughs> Ask the voice of God what it wants, and leave me alone. I'm sleeping. <sighs> so here we are, this morning. Hilarious story, when you know Hebrew. And uh, it involves uh, eventually the, that God is a wicked parent and the sons of God have sex in the wrong room of the temple. So that you know that it's a Roman period time document. Because that's when men were introduced as sacral prostitutes. And so that's the linguistic tell for the time period, because it wasn't prior to. If it were women, like Tamar, we might think, oh, okay, the book of Genesis was written during the Greek period of time. However, you've got that Sodom and Gomorrah story, which places it in the Roman period of time. So, <clears throat> another book, Daniel, placed in the Roman period time. It's in the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Qumran. It was broken up. There are different caves in which different parts of the book were found. The uh, Apocrypha are post-Constantine. And so they are, as Joseph Smith says, there are some interpolations of Christian in there but they are good for learning because there are some important fun stuff in there. Susanna, for example. Oh, Susanna. Again, to be added to the list <laughs> with some Christian tweaking because they don't want rape. And so they tone it down to just accusations of rape instead of an actual rape of Susanna. But nonetheless, then there's Bell and the Dragon, which Bell is my favorite of all the scriptures. Bell is my favorite, and it's a Christian one, which is why I, it's not a prophecy in Revelation. It's it's more of a story uh, like Nicolas Cage and the Crudes the name of the show, telling his stories to his kids to scare them into staying at the cave. But it's a fun story. So, Daniel chapter 5. 
And so that you get a background understanding of this, because Bel Shazar, Baal Shazar, is uh, the king of this chapter. He's the final king of Babylon before the Persians would come and destroy Babylon on the 12th of October, 539 BCE. And, yeah, it should be, it should be, I didn't put the six, right? Ooh, did I do a typing boo-boo? Yes, I did, okay. So it is 539, there you go. Okay, so, has no immediate reference to the latter days, just so that you know. Unless it happens this year on the... Uh, 12th and 13th of October. So pay attention for that, but that's government stuff. <sighs> Prophecy and Revelation involves the ancient understanding of things, which was theocratic government. So you have government and religion combined together, theocracy. Our day and time, when the fulfillments are being made, government and religion are separated, even though religion is trying to coup the government to become a theocracy again. <clears throat> Apparently Biden is supposed to hand over the keys of government to Jesus. Because <laughs> Trump failed to do it in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Way to perfection, guys. You gotta be following my channel. Over 4,000 videos, over seven years talking about the latter days for ya. There's so much stuff you've missed out on because of your unbelief or YouTube's terrorism. Blame YouTube demand that they fire the bleep and bleep bleep of a CEO from last year. Dear God, what an evil man he is. So, 9th Ave, 586 BCE, Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar has had enough of his brother and uh, I'm believing it's a brother, not a son. I'm pretty sure it's a brother. Family member who was placed in charge of uh, Judah on the throne of the palace of Judah and Jerusalem. And he was refusing to give tribute to his family member. I'm pretty sure it's a brother. Nonetheless. Uh, and so 9th Av, 9-11, it's Babylonian calendar, just in case you're wondering, but they were the ones who conquered, so it's their calendar that prevailed. The seven day week calendar with the seventh day as the day of superstition, fear, and paranoia, so that was a day off. Nobody was allowed to work on the seventh day, and thus, because the Babylonian Semitic, which, yes, imposed itself on Paleo-Hebrew, becoming Semitic Hebrew, some, the number seven and uh, Sabbath have similar spellings. It's just the last letter is different. But there is meaning in that as I am the one who deciphered Paleo-Hebrew for you, so that you would not be deceived by a false translator. It's not just prophets that you're supposed to be wary of. You're supposed to put on the test for seers and revelators and translators. All of it. And so since the church doesn't even claim translator, oops, automatically disqualifying themselves from being the one true church on the face of the earth. And you all fell for it, because you didn't.
didn't leave, and when you did leave, you still believe that the church is true as false. <laughs> Blaming Joseph. Dear God. <sighs> okay, so 9th Ave. 9-11. So when the Romans destroyed Jerusalem and the Jerusalem Temple. Yep, 9th Ave. So 9th Ave has been a big feature in destroying Jews. So. Nebuchadnezzar has a dream. And Daniel interprets that dream to say, well, you conquered the Jews on 9th Ave. And these are the kingdoms that are going to replace you in the future until the Jews finally get their kingdom restored. And Christians thought it was them. Christians literally are illiterate because of what Constantine did. Keep people illiterate so that they are more easily controlled with superstition, fear, and jealousy. Zombie song. Living Dead Girl. <laughs> Which, hmm, we'll write it down. <laughs> Just in case. Theme song in the description below. And so, yeah, all of the different parts of the statue's body refers to the different kingdoms. And so understand that this wasn't written prior to. This was written after, during the Roman period time. And so they knew all the way down to the iron legs. However, the mingling with clay is the prophecy. What happens to the feet of iron of Rome mingled with clay, Christians? Sorry, Christianity is not true. You should have read your Creed of Nicaea so that you would know it's not true because it confesses it's not true. Moseon. And even Constantine, with his claim to seeing a sign in the heavens, the Cairo, should have told you something. Because Christians, to this day, dominate with a T-cross that they'll wear as jewelry, pin it up on their walls of their home, do the sign for their superstition, rather than the lightning bolt of Mormons. From section 85. Verse 8, which comes from Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 20, for the false prophet. But uh, the chi is an X, thus the cross. So the Rho, Constantine knew, came from the Egyptian hieroglyph of God for the flag. So God on the cross, chi Rho. What he was declaring was that he's the Christ for his second coming to establish millennial Zion. And thus, the first creed of Christianity. The fallen Christians <laughs> were forced to give up their religious beliefs and now become Christian in millennial Zion. That's what Nelson's trying to do right now, by the way. And so, no, he's a false Christ. Obviously. Christians didn't even believe him because they're still waiting for Jesus to come back for a second time. They don't believe the Cairo. 
even though the Pope has the symbol. <laughs> you know, it's like Mormons. They never listen to the living prophet of Jesus. They go on vacation for conference. They never follow the church news, especially my videos on the church news. And so they're clueless. They know nothing of Mormonism. And yet, they claim the church is true and will prove it to you by beating you up and forcing you to confess it's true. Or cyber terrorizing you. Just like a knee whore. Okay? So, yeah, it's the rock is the Jewish religion, the restoration of the Jewish church. And so, Joseph Smith, 116 pages stolen, Doctrine and Covenants, section 3, verse 16. Joseph is told the Bible is Jewish, not Christian. Thus, the Book of Mormon is Jewish, not Christian, and they both talk about the Jewish Christ, not Jesus. And in case you're wondering, because I know it's all in the, your, your lips, your chapped lips, Groundhog Day, repeating information for you. You never thank me for saving you from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. <laughs> Bill Murray was awesome. It's been a while, so I'll quickly tell you this part of it. When I went to the theater up in Canada with my wife at the time, who would eventually betray me and stab me in the back, leave me for dead, and steal my research on deciphering Paleo-Hebrew, burning it to the ground, and spitting on me, and stealing their kids, fleeing the country. But nonetheless, uh, we uh, parked the car, we're walking into the theater, there's another couple that parked across from us in the parking lot of the theater. And they get out, and this was back in the days before the automatic lights that shut off five years later after you shut off the car, making people wonder, did they leave their lights on? No, they left their lights on. So I never knew of that technology. It hadn't been invented for us, at least anyway. It obviously was already invented in some lab of a car company by then as so they're testing it, but and they're using it for their own personal use, but not for the public, not yet. And, uh, and so I say, hey, as we're in line getting tickets, you left your lights on in the car. So we ran back while she got the tickets and went in and waited for him. And so then we watched the movie, and then after the movie, they saw us as we were going back to our vehicles, and, and jokes ensued on his part. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Have a good night. I'm going home, going to bed. on there. I've got all these <laughs> Groundhog Day <laughs> scenes in my head now. <laughs> Alright, so here we come to the first where the head gets chopped off as the Persians are at the gates. Okay, and so again, Belshazzar, Bel is the god of the Babylonians, Baal. So you gotta understand that this was in the Roman time during the Dead Sea Scrolls period, because it was found in, among the Dead Sea Scrolls. And that's why it's Bel rather than Baal. 
and and so he's making a feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand so he's drunk this is your brain this is your brain on alcohol any questions I saw a guy with a t-shirt saying we drink it first before you do for a brewery <laughs> so yeah I still had to get my water for the month didn't get that yesterday because they're heavy <laughs> I have to carry it home <sighs> so, yeah. but we're back uh, and so uh, while he tasted the wine commanded the to bring the golden silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem. They robbed God. But this has an important part with the symbolism of the latter days. This is a prophecy. Even though this is partly literal history, but we only know of this part because of the Bible story. And people assume it's literal history, and so they assume that this is what actually happened in Babylon. Not quite. There was a guy named Belshazzar. That is confirmed. We have the Babylonian documents to confirm it. We do know how the Persians came in and conquered them. Thus, we know the date. 12th of October, 539 BCE. And so, um, not quite 50 years, was it? If it was uh, 36, it would have been 50 years exactly. So it's 47. Ooh. Ooh. That's an interesting number. Anyway, don't want to too many sidetracks we're already at 30 minutes <clears throat> and so pay attention he's a drunkard he had stolen from the temple remember verse 20 of Deuteronomy 18 remember verse 8 of Doctrine and Covenants section 85 false prophet okay Theocracy, king and false prophet. He is stolen from the temple. He's the son, a descendant over time. But nonetheless, just like Nelson, a descendant as the president of the church, of those who stole from Joseph's temple stole the kingdom who destroyed the temple it wasn't on 9th Ave but the Book of Mormon did come forth on 9-11 because of 9-11 Canandaigua, New York Master Mason Lodge of Joseph Smith Sr. And the king, his princes, his wives, his concubines drank from the temple vessels. You need to pay attention and follow my videos, guys. Because this was just a recent one. This wasn't one from 4,000 videos ago. <sighs> All I did was because of the Apostle Paul had uh, uh, sent me a letter, email about his preaching 
brought up the Danites and saw in my video commentary, I uh, decided to check on who the uh, oh my god section 117 the Nicolaitan band from Revelation and yeah not only were they polygamous being described as polygamous they were even worse they shared their wives and so for the Danites to use that in their forged doctrine and covenant section 117 oops you told Thomas B Marsh that Joseph Smith was the leader of the Danites for which he then did his affidavit that caused the extermination order and 40 years later you're now writing that Joseph Smith is condemning Noel K. Whitney for being a part of the Nicolaitan band. Oops, somebody forgot that they had blamed Joseph for being the leader. <laughs> but for them to put in the Nicolaitan band as the coding to cover up the Danites is very telling of their confession of who they are. Thus, Noel K. Whitney, being a Danite, shared his wife with other Danites who shared their wives with him. It's just cringy. And then you hear in the news of what's going on. This morning I heard from last night's news that a mother, a Mormon mother in Provo had been pimping out her young teenage daughter. It was like 76 counts of rape, of pimping out her daughter. How are you considered good, Mormons? So yeah, the video I did yesterday, last night, another quickie. That one I got from uh, the Apostle James. <laughs> As I had notified him of a news story the other day in which an Eric Samson had murdered his Mormon wife down south I think it's St. George. And uh, I then got a, some follow-up emails from the Apostle James. All code. <laughs> and uh, he confirmed that uh, he's the son of Joe Samson, written by the finger of God. And, and so, yeah, that seems to set up my dream voice for this morning. <clears throat> because uh, written by the finger of God actually comes from the Book of Mormon part. Should we cover it? Oh. <clears throat> I already started. We'll do it after. It's on the notes. So I'll review the notes after we finish. Okay. And so they drank wine and praised the gods of gold, silver, brass, iron, wood, and stone. Hey, a number of those are in the statue. But as his name is Bell, that's the god they worshipped. And so this Roman period guy, he's just throwing in his ignorance. <laughs> it's a prophecy. Not literal history. So in the same hour came forth fingers 
written by the finger of God, written on the walls. And I think there's like a writing on the wall song. Could be from the 60s or the 70s. And that also is an option for a theme song in the description below if I can find it and if it is legitimate or if it's just part of the lyrics of a song that I had pop into my associative memory head. But these fingers wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. Writing on the walls is not unusual in Babylon. Nineveh, for example, when Babylon came and conquered, that whole interaction back and forth between the army and the king there behind the walls of Jerusalem, all of that comes from the walls of Nineveh. The author of that particular passage of the actual confrontation, which is it Kings or Chronicles or wherever it is, that was copied, plagiarized <laughs> from the wall of Nineveh. We know this because we know because we've got the wall, it's been excavated, and so thus it's an exact copy from the Biblical Hebrew text in from the wall. So it's Aramaic, technically Babylonian, Semitic. <clears throat> and so the Jewish Masoretes didn't really need to do any adding or taking away from just right there on the wall of Nineveh. <laughs> anyway. And so, the king, countenance changed. His thoughts troubled him. So that the joints of his loins were loosed. And his knees... Second wife is so cute. She asked me what loins were. All this time in the church, church won't tell you. Temple, it's there. Strengthen the loins and then the sinews. <laughs> Won't tell you. <laughs> and now that Nelson has changed it, well, it was Monson that changed it, as uh, they just lay your hands on your head the whole time as he rambles off the whole long list. They no longer touch you. So thus, when they get to loins, you would know what they're referring to, sort of. They're not actually supposed to touch the loins. <laughs> but that was part of the homophobic fear. That's why it's now just laying on the heads for the whole time. <laughs> and if you've never been to the temple, <laughs> you're out of luck. That's a separate video to discuss, if I find it. Uh, I may have touched on it, but I don't think I've actually done that video. <laughs> okay, so, knees smote together. The king cried aloud to bring the astrologers. Uh, Exodus, gods and kings brilliant to help you understand Babylonian astrology and the way they did things. <clears throat> the Chaldeans and the soothsayers, they went to Egypt. It's right there in, in figure number 10 of the facsimile number one, Mormons. You all miss it. You're all looking for some other Babylon of her. <sighs> and the king spake, said unto the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing and shew me the interpretation thereof shall be clothed with scarlet, 
have a chain of gold bling bling around his neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom he's the son of Babylon son of Nebuchadnezzar which technically there's and some others that were in between apparently in the actual record hmm. it doesn't say here I guess it was from the Wikipedia page that I briefed over anyway <clears throat> and so Daniel is the true seer visions dreams seer remember me dreams visions joseph smith remember dreams visions first vision second vision not literal history <sighs> blatantly obvious and mormons still want to live in denialism Looking for Jesus, who already came with Constantine. <laughs> and so, yeah, Islam, I never did talk about that, did I? Muhammad claims to have been the man like Moses. Goes to the top of Utah, receives the Quran, and then murders people to join his kingdom and uh, and then sexual abuse of women polygamy also but not as bad as the Danites who shared their wives <sighs> just cringy and the women blame Joseph that's just oh my hell a depth of depth of evil beyond the ninth levels of hell beyond the nine gates of Lucifer <laughs> just pure evil seriously dear God <sighs> I just and ex foes leave the church believing those women because we gotta believe a woman she would never lie she would never be the bad guy oh my hell anyway still have not heard back from the guy from academia who wanted to know more about the real Joseph Smith's monogamy if I had anything else on the polygamy issue but dear God anyway so you have the false seers by the false prophet Christ who can't figure it out it's easy <laughs> this is not what the dream warning waking me up wanted me to go over because again I would love to be going over the Hebrew part as you know Rebecca Susanna Samuel's mother could be need to be added to that list all the same patterns beautiful paintings of Susanna beautiful. which is weird because the Catholic Church because of the first creed of Nicaea turning everything into literal history and thus sex is evil blaming Eve rather than Adam for the fall so that they can abuse women and they go into the, the uh, witch's hammer and Salem witch trials and all that abomination but uh, yeah, for them to be so obsessed with porn and sex 
you know, like the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is, to be committing such horrible, evil sexual sins. Nonetheless, it's interesting that the painters doing the paintings of the scriptures just let it all hang out. For Eve in the Garden of Eden, for Susanna, for others, Lot's, wife, Lot's daughters, those paintings, masterful paintings, and yet porn. You'll go blind. <laughs> okay, where were we? <sighs> and so, let's see. Uh, none of them could read it. Which is interesting because it's in their language. <laughs> Roman period author and he's using the hilarious and so yeah it would be paleo Hebrew meaning not Babylonian Semitic that's why they can't read it now the Queen by reason of the words of the King and his Lords came into the banquet house and the Queen spake and said notice how she wasn't a part of the party the orgy or the wives. Interesting. The queen was not invited to this orgy party. Drunken orgy party. Another clue that it's Roman period. The Dionysian rituals. Or the, yeah, Dionysian temple rituals. <clears throat> uh, o king, live forever. Let not thy thoughts trouble thee nor let thy countenance be changed. And so here you're seeing also an Esther pattern. Esther is the one who saved the Jews during the Persian period uh, with uh, the uh, Hagar, Hamath, one of the five, who builds a weapon to murder the Jews. And Esther is a Jew, and so she goes and, and presents herself before the king to save the Jews. So this is what's going on here, but now Daniel is the one to save the Jews as the queen is going to tell the king, hey, I know of a man who can read this and thus save the Jews, because he's going to talk about the saving of the Jews. You're a naughty boy. You're going to die. Your kingdom is destroyed because you Attack the Jews. All right, there is a man <clears throat> in thy kingdom. And so we'd have to read the previous chapters to see the connection between Daniel and the queen. I'm assuming it's in there. <laughs> I didn't read it. Associated memory is not bringing it to mind. It's instead bringing up Joseph of Egypt getting falsely accused by the prison guard's wife or the slave owner's wife and so then he goes to prison and then dreams ensued for that see how there's a pattern going on here but nonetheless uh, in whom is the spirit of the holy gods in the days of their father, thy father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was found in him, whom the king, Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, I say, thy father, and it's the father, so it is the son, according to this, made master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. Yeah, he's talking about the statue god dream that Daniel interpreted. That's what she's referring to there in verse 11. For as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams and chewing of hard sentences and dissolving of doubts were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belt Shazar. Now let Daniel be called and he will shew the interpretation. Then Daniel brought in before the king 
was Daniel brought in before the game. And the king spake unto Daniel and said, Art thou Daniel? Daniel is judge of God, Danites. We are the judges. Obey us or die. Here's my wife. Now give me yours. Which art the children of the captivity of Judah, whom the king of thy father, my father, brought out of Jewry. <clears throat> so, brought out of Jewry? You mean kidnapped? <laughs> Held hostage? <laughs> Those Hamas, I tell ya. And yes, they are a, brand, a descendants of those Babylonians who were destroyed and fled into Saudi Arabia, where Muhammad would then emerge and then claim to be Moses, the man like Moses, the fulfillment of the coming of Jesus the first time, and then turns Jesus into just the one time, and he's Muslim instead of Christian, and so he's coming back a second time. <laughs> In the latter days, he failed to show also. Only the Jewish Christ showed. What's up with that? Other religions, Mormon, Christian, and Islamic. I mean, seriously, this is blatantly obvious in everybody's face. Everybody now knows their religion is wrong. They know. And still they're in denial. And here I am. Wanting to retire. This has been a long latter days. Anyway. Uh, let's see. I have heard of thee that the spirit of the gods is in thee. Yeah, because of the queen. Got it. <laughs> Quit repeating. Get to the point. Now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me that they should read this writing, and they, and they don't. And so I will reward you, Scarlet. I don't care about bling. <sighs> Be the third ruler in the kingdom. So Nebuchadnezzar. He's number three. Let's see what's going on here. This is the resurrection of the Jews to make Daniel the king of Babylon, which would be the king of Persia. But again, it's a Roman period author prophesying of the future, so you're not supposed to take this literally, because Daniel was not a Jew that became the Persian ruler conquering Babylon. <laughs> See, Christians just don't get it. They say that the Book of Mormon can't be true because science has proven that it can't be true as literal history. And then they go and claim the Bible is literal history, but here yet again, another example of how the Bible can't be literal history. <laughs> they just deny and lie and rewrite history and destroy science and logic. Just like Mormon apologists do. <sighs> Daniel answered and said unto the king, Let thy gifts be to thyself, and give thy rewards to another. But I'll still read it. Yeah. Make known to the interpretation. See that? See, Russia, when the Russian came to me and asked for my Paleo Hebrew research, if it was so that he can figure out the Cairo in Russian. That's all he had to ask. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't owe me a favor, though. <laughs> though, where are you guys for your thousands of views for my videos? You've abandoned me. You showed up that one conference And 
and you don't believe me that the church is going to overthrow your government, that Putin's going to hand over the keys of government to Nelson. You don't believe me? But dear God. <laughs> and you not caught on? China? Germany? Saudi Arabia? Brazil are all represented in the Twelve Apostles, not Russia. <laughs> See, I'm doing this for free. Academia, it's free. Go to it, read it. If you want to download it, download it. It's free. These videos, free. This Lewis, you need to reference me. You are not the authority. You have no clue what you just did with that picture. You need to reference me. And yet he put a copyright of him. No, Lewis, you got it from me. Reference me. I know and understand it. You don't. If people assume that you know what you're talking about, they're going to hunt you down and try to kill you. You need to reference me. I will take the fall. People are going to be deceived thinking you know all about it. And then you will expose yourself and, and then nobody's going to believe any of it. And then here I am, the one guy who gave it to you and for free. You stole it from me. Created a pretty picture though. Thank you. But you have no clue what it means. So anyway, O thou King, the Most High God, gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom. Amen of the 18th dynasty Egyptians. He took the land from the Egyptians. That's why it's worded this way. And majesty and glory and honor. And for the majesty that he gave him, all people, nations, and languages tremble and fear before him, whom he would he slew. And would he be kept alive, he would be set up, he would he put down, and his heart was lifted up, and his mind hardened in pride. He was deposed from his kingly throne. Just, he didn't die. <laughs> so let's see how it's being worded here. And they took his glory from him. And he was driven from the sons of men. And his heart was made uh, like the beasts. And his dwelling was with the wild asses. And they fed him with grass like the oxen. Yeah, 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 he's worm food. Got it. Do heaven. Most high God ruled in the kingdom of men, and he appointed over it whomever he will. <clears throat> and thou his son, O Belshazzar, hast not humbled thine heart though thou knewest all this. See where he's going here? Your father fell, having been given the land of Egypt, called Judah. And he was a wicked man, and he's dead. Now you have replaced him, and you're a wicked man. Guess what the consequences are going to be? Nelson, you sure you want to be next, Oaks? You sure? There's a curse of Joseph Smith out there. Just saying. And I, it's just unbelievable the stupidity of Mormons who think they're going to own me and say, You're threatening to murder them! Did I murder Brigham? John Taylor? Wilford Woodruff? Lorenzo Snow? Joseph Fielding Smith Sr.? Heber J. Grant? George Albert Smith. 
David O. McKay. Am I getting these? Am I missing anybody? Uh, and then uh, Joseph Fielding Smith Jr., uh, Harold B. Lee, Spencer W. Kimball, Ezra Taft Benson, Howard W. Hunter, Gordon B. Hinckley, Thomas S. Monson. Did I miss somebody in that? Did I get them? Every single one of them experienced a curse of Joseph Smith. Nelson, you're next in the coming days. It's coming. There's the Most High God that you have messed with and he's pissed. Okay. And have brought the vessels of his house before thee. You have robbed God, Nelson. Thou and thy lords, thy wives, thy concubines. And it's strange. Mormons say the church is true. Say that Nelson is the living prophet of Jesus. And don't obey him. He changed the temple text. Law of chastity. You're supposed to be practicing polygamy. Even if you don't understand, he lowered the age to 11. Still, Mormons are disobedient. They're having orgy sex instead, pimping out their daughters. Uh, which, bring your daughter to the slaughter is also a good one. But that's not really the focus of this video. Oh, God. Poor girl. And then, you know, okay, mommy. She has no clue that, that what her mom did to her was wrong. And so her brain has been tampered with, with incorrect input data, which all needs to be purged from her system. As, you know, when she goes to my maids, or whatever it's called now, I think Nelson changed the names. When they give her the lesson about chewing gum. Dear God. And then going to BYU or even talking to her bishop. Unless mommy made sure, don't tell the bishop. It's be our little secret. I'll put you in one of those hundred centers, treatment centers for teens. I won't cry. It's, you guys are just the worst of humanity. Dear God, it's sickening. And you all claim you're righteous. Just abominable. Bleep you all. Themselves and you're drunk and the Dionysian rituals. Now I praise the gods of all of the different stuff which see not, nor hear, nor know. Yeah, he's attacking the Babylonian idolatry, calling them stupid. It's just pictures of a naked woman. Come on. <laughs> she has no power. She's not a witch. She's beautiful, lovely, and of good report and praiseworthy, so we need to seek after her. Don't turn her into an idol to fear or punish. And the God in whose hand thy breath is, and otherwise and glorified, and the writing was written. And this is the writing which was written. Mene, mene, tekel. Upsharan. This is the interpretation of the thing. Mene, God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tekel. 
thou art weighed in the balances and are found wanting. Perez, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. And so, because this is uh, Aramaic, the A is at the end of men, rather than at the beginning of men for Paleo-Hebrew, a suffix determinative. Here it's a prefix, de or suffix determinative rather than the prefix determinative of Paleo-Hebrew. So the A is the, uh, uh, the Eye of Horus. And so you may have heard of Amen. That's not the right spelling. Amen, not the right spelling. This is a different one. There's uh, uh, Amen, Yaman, which you can find in Ben Yaman, Benjamin. That's the the uh, the Z Zeta shape, which Babylonian Semitic is Yod. And then there's the A. Uh, there's most likely an omen, but I'm not, it's not popping up in my head of a word for that that you would know from scripture. And so they're all similar because of the root word MN, and it's high priest and king. And so thus Melchizedek. And so Horus is the son of Osiris. Belshazzar is the son of Nebuchadnezzar in the story. Thus Horus of the king as the prince. And the prince is now the king. And so thus he is the false Christ who is usurping the throne of Horus. Thus he's portrayed as Set in this story. And so he is Melchizedek, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the Great High Priest, as the son of Nebuchadnezzar. Real simple. Tekel, yeah, no. It's not weighed in the balance. Shekel is no. This is Tekel. This is the verb. <laughs> Who translated this? <sighs> and so in Paleo Hebrew, you have prefix determinatives for verb tense, for past present and future. They must be there. Genesis chapter 1, it must be there. It's not there by the Jewish Masoretes of the Biblical Hebrew text. Joseph is right, you should have trusted Joseph. You didn't. And you throw Joseph under the bus as not a translator, so you redefine revelator as somebody who gets inspiration rather than gives you a day and hour of the future prophesied events. And so for past, the N is used. For present, the Z yod is used. And then for future, the T, the cross, is used. And so it's will. So then you gotta say, okay, well, what is the two letter word? Call. Voice. Will voice. Belshazzar will voice Persians. Perez. Replaced by the Persians. That's the writing on the wall. You are wicked, you're adulterous, you're drunken, you're 
an idol worshiper, you have lost your right to the throne. The fall of the great and abominable church and the false Christ, false prophet, that leads it. Bye bye, Nelson. Bye bye. Five days left. Bye bye. Which it would, it would, it's just so frustrating. It's perfect right now. Nelson is 99 years old and 11 months. Two sets, 9 11. We've already had the first one on 9th Ave. The baptism of water. Now we got the baptism of fire. I already know it's going to happen. It's already prophesied, but I know it's going to happen. Don't bet against me on this one, Mormons. Because it's I've been showing you the picture of what's going to happen. The fire, baptism of fire, Perseid meteor showers, forehead of Medusa, the third eye, serpent hair, turn to stone. Do not mess with me. And you do, because you don't believe, and you deny. Jesus is coming. He'll smite you down, Travis. Bring it on. I showed. He didn't. You don't get it. Dear God. And so then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with all the stuff he said he didn't want. <laughs> He's the, now the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. That's the story. Daniel, the judge of the Danites, just like Samson, the Sun King, conquered Belshazzar and is now the King of Kings, Lord of Lords in the millennial reign of Zion at the crossroads of the Sun God at noonday. Very easy breezy cover girl, or maybe it's Maybelline. And so I'm curious to see if somebody had put the Book of Mormon passage, Mosiah 8, 13. You know? I did do this footnoting. I'm not sure if I got through all of it, but I did do at least the first part of it. And so, <clears throat> if you went to the Spanish edition and you check the footnotes, uh, you'll see all of this was my work, whether they approve what... Well, I'd have to explain again. <laughs> that would be interesting. Really, you put an Aramaic division, Aramaic shekel or weight, See, Aramaic numbered. Dear God, no. It was supposed to be Hebrew, and they put Aramaic because they don't have an Aramaic thing here. So you see that here. But you see in verse 5a, OR opposite the lampstand. That's because the one of the two Hebrew scholars from BYU which one of them was Avraham Gileadi, had put in an HEB recommendation. But when it was reviewed, it was rejected. So instead, the ignorant person who does not know Hebrew put OR in place of HEB and then put opposite the lampstand. And again, you see in 6C, OR his hip joints. I was asked to go through and cross those out. We're not doing ORs and IEs anymore. If it's an HEB, fine, but we have the two Hebrew scholars at BYU to deal that with that, Travis. I know you have the Jesus card, but... <laughs> And so, yeah, because of this, that's why you see Aramaic was created without, and then you got the people in charge of this who know nothing. 
they're given an order by the president of the church to do this project and this is the consequences of ignorance god pathetic because i was already working on it being told to study my scriptures this way i was going through the footnotes and i was finding out oh my hell this what and with my associative memory, I was able to write in, annotate, as we were told to do in seminary, the correct footnoting. <laughs> so when I was asked, yeah, I'd already been an expert on this. I have no idea what an inspired from Jesus choice that was to pick me. And so let's check the Mosiah. Uh, that's Ammon talking about a seer no letter. That's not the writing on the wall. <sighs> God, now we gotta search and see if we can find it because I didn't do it before the video. Writing on wall. Homa 10? Ah, there it is. Written by the finger of God. There we go. Alma chapter 10. Now these are the words of Amulek, preached unto the people, who were in the land of Ammonihah, saying, I am Amulek, I am a son of Gedona, who was the son of Ishmael, who was a descendant of Aminadi, and it was the same Aminadi who interpreted the writing which was upon the wall of the temple. Belshazzar would have been in the temple. Dionysian rites were performed in the temple. But the Jewish author writing about this, well, he could have still, it's Babylon, he could have done it in the temple. You know, Bruce, he doesn't want to say temple for Samson when he was tied to the pillars of the temple of the Philistines. He said building. <laughs> There's patterns here, Bruce. Temples. <sighs> Which was written by the finger of God. This is where this comes from. Daniel chapter 5. That's why it's in the Book of Mormon. And that's why it's in this place. Because Daniel chapter 5. And it should have been footnoted to a Daniel chapter 5. Good for you, Bruce. It's probably one of the other guys, wasn't it? Because <laughs> Alma was not in Daniel. And I wondered, should we dare? Should we dare risk having the video freeze on us? I mean, I've been left alone for an hour and 18 minutes. After the first two freezings before the video got started. I see you. Can't hide from me. Interesting. 
interesting. is in Aramaic counted. They left in the Aramaics. Bastards. So that's what happened is they rejected my recommendation and left in the Aramaic because that's what you do if there's a dispute the same error remains. It continues on. They're supposed to remove all Aramaic stuff, too, because only Hebrew for the Old Testament, only Greek for the New Testament, and so they rejected my Egyptian recommendations. But Joseph Smith, you said that was your rules, and this has not been plugged in. It shouldn't affect it because I've got the microphone on the camera itself. I don't know if I just changed the volume or the whatever. Interesting. Okay, so 16. Hello? Seriously? Okay, Mosiah, 15 to 18. That was the change I made. Removing the parentheses, but that's all they left. Guys, and what was that other one? We wanted to find the Alma one, didn't we? They should have put Alma in here. Por nombre. First, roll over against the candlestick. First five. Okay. Nano Escriba. How much after ten? Yep, that was my addition. I did it right. Cool. I removed Ether 3.6 and Abraham 3.12 with the parentheses, and I removed the OR opposite the light stand and put in Alma chapter 10. You're welcome. Mm hmm. Because no Alma chapter 10. There's Alma 18.12 for 6a, which is trouble, no, not trouble, countenance, which that got deleted. <laughs> so see boom I knew and fixed it but they <laughs> bastards <laughs> I'm in your midst and you reject me you knew I had the Jesus card and you still reject me <laughs> and so yeah you're welcome. So there you go. Wasn't that fun? Reward for those of you who've endured this long. <laughs> Written by the finger of God, Joe Sampson, whose son murdered his wife. <sighs> Alright. And so that that's really all it is. But that's what it's referring to. Because then he goes on and talks about, and Amenadi was a descendant of Nephi, who was the son of Lehi, who came out of the land of Jerusalem, who was a descendant of Manasseh, who was the son of Joseph, who was sold into Egypt by the hands of his brother. And so, yeah, I, 
is now I think because I I saw it and I just I can't find it anymore. But he says that he was a polygamist and that that was a wicked practice of him. And I just I've never been able to find it since. All right. So there we go. Oh, right, um, um, 526, back to Daniel, uh, the actual, uh, because it's actually King of Salem in verse 26, this is the interpretation of the thing, Mene, God hath numbered thy kingdom, and it is finished. They're Salem, Kingdom of Salem. Not it finished. I believe that's the one it is. Uh, I did do a Hebrew copy and paste of Daniel 5. It is finished is not it is finished. Salem. Kingdom. Salem. That's what it's referring to. The restoration of the Jews. They were removed from Salem. And so they're getting it back under Daniel, the judge. Just as Samson was a descendant of the Danites, Dan, judge. God judge, the judge of God. And so, like Horus, he wins because Set gives birth to the branch to show that Horus is the rightful king through Set, as well as through Osiris. So, ta-da! All right, got that one. But there's Salem, and it's horrifying that the Jews did not catch that. Come on, guys. Uh, yeah, it's weird. Mormons don't believe in prophecy and revelation, but they believe in Jesus coming. <laughs> They're named Latter-day Saints, but they don't believe in the Latter Days because of Monson. Nope, this isn't it. It's in the coming days. Irene, I found the video, in case I didn't tell you that I found the video. <laughs> yeah. Three more generations until the latter days. No, scrolls are going to be rolled up by then. <laughs> and, yeah, utterly, wait, this is what we have to concern ourselves with here. Uh, so we'll close with Joseph Smith in the second vision. Samuel the e Eli, yeah, covered that. Which is why the name is Samuel the Lamanite, by the way name of God to the Mormons on the wall not a coincidence LDS but tonight LDS yeah his dream oh right we do have to talk about Lehi too right 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 so I'll bring you back Lehi's second, that leads into Joseph Smith's second vision, so, yeah, 
Good, we're still doing okay. And then my dream. And that's something else. And that's for my retirement video. And then we've got to add Susanna. And uh, Samuel. By Pharaoh producing Jesus. <laughs> so, a second vision. He sees the 23rd of September 2017, the start of the latter days. This is the end of the latter days. Yeah, you're way behind. Thank you for still listening, though. <laughs> and so, the sun at noonday. Amen, Emmanuel, sun god at noonday. And there's the uh, apostle James and Paul. <laughs> and he comes down to Lehi, gives him a book, bads him that he should read. And as it came to pass, he read, he was filled with the Spirit of the Lord, saying, Woe, woe unto Jerusalem, for I have seen thine abominations. Yea, and many things did my father read concerning Jerusalem, that it should be destroyed. Yeah, guess what I was warned about this morning, guys? Five more days till 9-11. The two 9-11s? It's just, oh my god, we're all, and it just, and, oh my god. You did, it, did it, and it's, oh my god. This has just been way too long for me. All by myself. The inhabitants thereof should be destroyed and perished away and carried into Babylon. Ninth Ave. God, they're giving you the dates. Right here. And I get the warning this morning in the dream. For Ninth Ave, 9-11. Dear God, Mormons, what does it take? So, and throne is high in the heavens, yeah, amen, we got it. Men of language, it is speak, and won't give a full account of his visions and dreams. They proceed into my day, and after the Lord had shown so many marvelous things unto Lehi, concerning the destruction of Jerusalem, behold, he went forth among the Mormons in a YouTube video, and began to prophesy and declare unto them yet again, I've been right all this time. Are you still going to deny? Are you still going to refuse to believe? This is just tragedy and unfolding here. Mormons have been revealed as the worst of humans ever on the face of the planet. Oh, God. And here I am in vain trying to save them. I began to prophesy and declare unto them the things which he had both seen and heard. It came to pass that Mormons did mock him because of the things which he had testified them and cyber terrorized him and <laughs> changed the algorithms to keep people from viewing his videos. And the, the, the 226 from yesterday and the others from before, those aren't one video. It's an open YouTube recommendation that those who are interested in my video topics are being shown the particular video that they would want to watch and that's what's going on with the YouTube algorithms during certain time periods for just one hour and it's probably even less than an hour that's just what was allowed to get through for that one hour and so it could be for just a minute but in that minute, boom, 226 views because YouTube, for that one minute in transition, recommended my videos. And this exposes YouTube silencing me. This is criminal. 
for them to be busted by the DOJ for promoting Russian disinformation about the election and white supremacist videos and anti-women stuff. <laughs> this is a national tragedy that we're experiencing here. The whole thing is crumbling down before your very eyes and Mormons, you're still going to deny this? You're still going to vote for Trump? Well, I'd rather be Russian than vote Democrat. I understand that there's an 800 number that Democrats can call and vote early to ensure their vote. <laughs> because after I took the Disney princess test, These are what I'm being told on Facebook. <laughs> it's just so blatantly obvious. And MAGA and Fox News are all denying it. Oh, Russia, Russia, Russia again. No, not Russia, Russia, Russia again. It's been proven. It's in the Book of Mormon. Right there. The first year of the reign of King Zedekiah in 2017 by a foreign government where the solar eclipse occurred over Russia 20, 20 years ago. <sighs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, they're going to murder me. <laughs> and thus the exodus is coming. <sighs> it's coming, Mormons. The destruction of Ninth Ave was a forced exodus. Remember the exodus patterns of the Book of Mormon? From the Bible also, but more dominantly in the Book of Mormon. Because that's what it's talking about. The latter days starts you off in 2017. And so this one, Lehi, is going to be murdered by Mormons. And so he flees because of a dream. I was just warned in a dream this morning to warn you about many, many tackle up Sherim or whatever it was, Perez. <laughs> Don't memorize, it's not in front of me. And five days left till 9 11. Maybe it's the election, maybe this is premature. But we are told, this church is going to fall, and great shall be the fall of it. Apparently they're supposed to get locked up in prison. But, something's coming. Don't mess with him. He's pissed. And so for him to warn me in the dream this morning, ties everything together because I am surprised that I didn't cover this earlier because this is made of, it's part of the 9-11 stuff but yeah everything basically but this Daniel abomination of desolation as spoken of by Daniel so let's go to Joseph Smith history now <sighs> finish this off Thus in the act of calling upon God at the bedside, I was going to be wearing the white shirt today, but I chose to wear this since I was going to the store. I don't really like the white shirt. <laughs> Amazon only had the white shirt available in my size. Didn't have the other light blue one that got destroyed in Gail Miller's concentration camp of hell of human trafficking. Dear God. I just... 
being held captive there destroys clothes, just utterly destroys them. Not just with the wearing down so quickly, but the drug soaking that's done to them with the secondhand smoke. Oh God. And I'm smelling it this morning as I'm walking by one of my neighbors of heroin. Dear God. They better not be in our apartments. They better not be in my apartment. Because that's just going to destroy this whole building. But they are specifically designed to be separate from the others. So that if one room apartment gets contaminated, it won't seep into the others because the vents are not connected. They all have our separate vents. But... Oh God. And so, yeah, only the closing down of the one apartment would be done and the building owners would going to be furious if that were the case. But, yeah. Gail Miller solved that problem by ignoring it and hoping it goes away. <laughs> so, a light appearing in his room, above the brightness of the sun at noonday. Oh, Emmanuel. Me. And seriously, all the symbolisms for the props for the videos, and you're still... What the snake? Snakes are evil. <laughs> your room is a mess too, and you're ugly. So I'm not believing you. I still remember joking and teasing the second X. Who's not an ex? She just, we never got married, even though we got married. We're still sealed, but uh, marriage was annulled. So it never happened. It's a Catholic thing, <laughs> like Jesus. <laughs> Which is where annulments came from, the first creed. <sighs> but I told her, he says, he's naked, and she Joseph can see he's naked because he can see through to his boobs. There's her white. It was supposed to be today. I chose not to. It was put in because I had to do laundry yesterday for the whites. and So the white shirt was placed on top of the smaller pile. I'm supposed to do laundry. Oh, I didn't start the laundry this morning. <laughs> I'm way behind now. And so, let's see, feet doesn't touch the floor because they're on the seat stand. <laughs> Whiteness, it's just because it's new. Bought it when I moved in here. <laughs> I'm glad he's not saying about my face being white because the story of Moses says that I'm a white guy. Alright, he says uh, he's Malachi, messenger, Malachi in Hebrew. Sent from the presence of God to me. And so, yes, messenger, Mercury. Where's Mercury? It's in the sky. There was a guy on the bus when I was coming home who was con deeply concerned. He can't see the moon. He checked all over. There's no moon in the sky. Yeah, and so I yelled out, "It's you'll see it in the evening. <laughs> he was silent for the rest of the trip. He was just rambling and rambling and rambling. He said, I can't find the moon. <laughs> you'll see it in the evening. Zip. Messenger is still at the King Star, Regulus, in Leo, the Lion, Utah, Judah, phonetically the same. 
the messenger is speaking to you today from the presence of God his name is Nephi not Moroni Willard Richards is an evil man who murdered Joseph Smith shot him in the back and then dumped his body out the window and then came back over to Hiram shot him right here and that's the blood stain on the floor after blowing out the back of his head lying on the ground being shot with my third great grandfather single shot because John Taylor was trying to wrestle it out of his hands and this church just unbelievable the abominations the Mormons just say yep we are evil and that makes us good so there's the book Book of Mormon. Gold plates for the Knights Templar. Egyptian gold treasure plates. Brought to America, 1363. Planted in the caves of southern Illinois next to Little Egypt. Where X marks the spot for the Cairo the actual day and hour that we just had 20 20 years later after 8 april 4 ce over russia and so then he talks about the urim and thummim that sign in the heavens seers visions and dreams Translator, visions and dreams, revelator, prophecy. All right here, guys. And so then he's talking about the latter day prophecies. Starts with Malachi, messenger. And starts off with. day shall come that shall burn as an oven. 9-11. The abomination spoken of by Daniel. Abomination of desolation. They that come shall burn them. That's why I'm curious. Because the sign in the heavens and the actual occurrence is going to happen. The baptism of fire is already set. It's going to happen. Perseus, right there at Medusa's forehead. But, Joseph is warning of something more to come for this. They that come shall burn you. And it's not just Mormons. Those of you who are ex-fo or never mos and you think you're going to be like Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego and not get burned like the Mormons who are wicked. <laughs> really? You know the church is false. You know that they believe they're not going to get burned. And for some reason you think you're not going to get burned? No! That's the whole point of talking about an exodus. An exodus! You need to leave! Exit! It's from the same root. Exod. Exit. D and T are phonetically the same. Exit. Stage left. Go to Missouri. No. Illinois. X marks the spot. 19 July 1840, Joseph Smith makes this clear. God. So, then he adds to the other part. If it were not so, the whole earth would be utterly wasted at his coming day that come that shall burn as an oven burn as stubble they that come shall burn you utterly wasted at his coming who is he me the sun god at noonday 
God and soul. Shouldn't have to keep repeating this. It's useless for you to deny and not believe and run away and hide and hoping I go away. Because <laughs> there I am in verse 40. The Christ of the Jews, Messiah ben David. Second Nephi, chapter 3, verse 5. Being told by Deuteronomy, section, or not Deuteronomy, but yeah, but that's Doctrine and Covenants, section 3, verse 16. Jewish Christ. Not Christian, not Islamic, Jewish. And Joseph Smith, from the Book of Mormon, we are told he comes after Joseph Smith. Section 103, verse 16, after Joseph Smith, to save Mormons, if they would listen, or be utterly wasted at his coming, burned as stubble, from they that come who shall burn you. And then says, cut off for not listening. Did you see what it says precisely as it stands in Acts? Yeah, it says destroyed, not cut off. And from the Greek, it's actually supposed to be translated utterly destroyed. Well, there's utterly wasted, but then we have destroyed in verse 42, right? Destroyed, yep. And again, he told me that when I got those plates, which I had spoken for the time and that they should come had not yet been fulfilled, because we have two sets, four times each, on 9 22nd. 22nd can be split in half to 11. 9 11. Two sets of 9 11. Here we have Nelson, who's 99 and 11 months. 99, 9, and 9, two 9-11s. It's weird, but connects. I remember when he turned 99, that there was a whole bunch of 99s going on that year, that last year, wasn't it? Hmm, yeah, interesting. But nonetheless, notwithstanding, <clears throat> so here we go. Yeah, and for 9-11, oh my hell, Nelson, oh my hell. And then 9-11 for the Jewish calendar. There at my bedside with the red shirt that time, doing that whole video series about the Book of the Law from Section 85. The church rushed it out before Thanksgiving and said the church is true. Section 119 is true. No. No, it's not. But they're replacing Section 84 or 64, which is Joseph Smith's law of economy, which comes from Malachi. Will a man rob God? Yes, Nelson's robbing God. He is using the temple for his own purposes and orgies and golden calves. <sighs> but yeah, Deuteronomy. That's me, guys. I'm the Christ. You're not Jesus. No, duh. Dumbass. Anti Semite. They, Mormons, who would not hear me, will be destroyed, utterly destroyed, utterly wasted, cut off, <sighs> burn as stubble. You're not getting the significance here. You're not fearing and trembling yet. You're not even listening. You went on vacation, didn't you? You went on your vacation early so that you can miss it. And so you'll just have a couple days left when you get back and this video won't be recommended to you. You're doomed. I don't, I'm, I'm told what to do, I'm doing it, but I cannot overcome the enemy. And the enemy is you. You are your own worst enemy and the consequences will follow.